All right, so this lesson is for Windows users to install and set up for internet computer development. And it's a little bit long, um, I have to admit. If you take a look at the doc, um, which I link to in this current Udemy lesson, then you'll see that it's got quite a few pages that we have to get through in order to be able to get up and running for working with Windows and the internet computer. But don't worry, I'm going to guide you step by step through everything that you need to do. And even though it's quite long, as long as you follow the steps in the dark and watch the video before you start, then it should be okay. And if there's any changes down the line, I'll be updating this doc. So don't worry too much about that. Now, the first thing we need to do is to make sure that we've got the correct system requirements. So if you go into the start um, section and search for system information, then you can see what the OS version is you're running. So at a minimum, you should be running Windows 10 version 2004 or above. And you can tell that that's the correct version by looking at this version and seeing that it's 19041 or above and I've got 19044 here, so that's perfect. And also, if you're running Windows 11 or above, that's totally fine. The second thing to check is to make sure that you're running 64-bit Windows. So under system type, you should see x64. Unfortunately, it's not gonna work very well with 32-bit. So these are the two requirements. Next, you're gonna go and search for PowerShell and make sure that you open it as an administrator. This is really important. We're going to copy this line from the um, from the guideline docs and we're just going to paste it in. It's just WSL dash dash install, but it's easier to paste it in so you don't make any typos. And it's going to install something called the Windows submachine for Linux. Basically, it's going to give us a virtual Linux to work with, allowing us to run bash commands, which are required when we're working with the Definity Internet computer. So this is gonna take a little while to run, but once it's done, it'll tell you the request operation is successful, but you have to restart your machine for it to take effect. So go ahead and restart your computer. And once it has restarted and launched again, it should automatically bring up this pane where you need to set up a username and password for working with Ubuntu. So go ahead and enter those pieces of information. But remember, when you type your password, it's not going to show up on screen. So just be sure you know what you're typing and maybe keep it simple as well because we're going to be using this password very, very shortly when we're installing other components. Now, once that's complete, go ahead and open up Windows PowerShell as the administrator again. And I want you to run the command that you see in the installation guide. And this basically just checks to make sure that WSL was correctly installed. As long as you see Ubuntu version two listed here, you're ready to go to the next step, which is to install Visual Studio Code. So head over to the link that I've got for you in the um, installation guide. And once you're there, you should be able to download um, the latest stable version of VS Code. And then we can go ahead and click on the download to install it. Now go through the installation wizard, accepting the agreement, choosing all of the defaults, and make sure that you add a desktop icon so we can access Visual Studio Code quickly. Now, once the installation has completed, it will automatically launch. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna install some required extensions to VS Code. So head over to the installation guide and copy the first link for the Motoku extension and paste it into the browser. And if you click on install in your browser, then it should be able to bring up Visual Studio Code and allow you to open that link inside VS Code. Now, the reason is because there's quite a few extensions called Motoku, but we want the one that's from the Dfinity Foundation. Um, and then we're gonna install our remote WSL, which is gonna allow us to use the terminal inside VS Code and tap into that WSL that we installed earlier on.
Now, finally, we're ready to go ahead and install Node into WSL. So this means that even if you have installed Node before on your Windows computer, you have to do this again, just so that we can work with WSL and Node and Definity and everything else. So either head over to the Homebrew link that's in the installation guide, or simply just copy that um, command and open up Ubuntu from the start menu and paste that command in and run it. During the installation process, it's gonna ask you for the password that you set just a moment ago when you set up Ubuntu, and you just need to type that in right now. When, when they ask you to confirm, also go ahead and hit enter. Now, once it's done installing Homebrew, there's two steps that you have to complete, and they show you this in the next steps section. Basically, this is going to make Homebrew available to use in the path. It doesn't really matter if you don't understand what that means. It's just a little bit of manual um, setup that's required. And finally, add that um, part that's underneath the install homebrew dependencies. Enter your password and type Y when they ask you to and let it go through the full installation process. Now, once you see that dollar sign again, that means it's all done. And we can now check and make sure by typing in brew dash dash version. And if you see homebrew followed by some sort of version number, then that means everything was successful. Now, finally, we're going to use Homebrew to install Node version 16. This is the latest stable version, and this is the version that will work with the internet computer. So it's really important that you follow this command. Now, if you get this error that I've got, Node 16 is keg only, which means it was not symlinked. This is because you have another Node version installed on your computer. And all you have to do is simply type brew link node at 16 in order to link to this version that we just installed. And now you can type node dash dash version. And as long as you get a version that starts with 16, then you are ready to roll. Now, finally, we're ready to install DFX. So go ahead and copy that line of code that you see on the installation guide and paste it into the Ubuntu um, command line. Now it's gonna take a little while to fetch DFX, which is the package that's going to allow us to work with the internet computer locally. Once it has installed, then it's gonna tell you where it was installed and we have to manually set up the path to point to that location. So in the um, installation guide, I've got this um, stub for you, which I want you to paste into Notepad and replace the part which says replace with your installation path with the installation path you got from the um, DFX install. So copy that, paste that in there, make sure there's no space between the colon and the first forward slash, copy that entire command, paste it back into Ubuntu, hit enter to run that command. And now if you copy that line where it says echo and then a bunch of symbols, you should be able to see that your DFX location was added to your path like I've got here. Now, finally, run DFX dash dash version and you should see DFX 0.93. And if you do, then that means DFX was successfully installed and you're ready to finally get started by creating your first internet computer application. So open up VS Code and click on that little green icon to the bottom left and select new WSL window. Now, once you've done that, you can close down the previous window if you want, but make sure that the window that you're working with says WSL colon Ubuntu. And if you hover over it, it should say running in Ubuntu. Now go ahead and open up Ubuntu from the start menu again. And we're going to create a directory called IC projects. So you can either paste this command in from the installation um, instructions, or you can type it out but we're basically creating this folder called IC projects inside our main user folder. And then we're going to CD or change directory into that newly created folder. And 
inside that folder where we're going to be creating all of our internet computer projects, I want you to go ahead and type the command dfx new hello. And this is going to build us our sample internet computer application called hello and leave it in the background to do its thing. And once it's built, um, you'll see the Definity logo show up and we can see where our folders and files are by using the command um, that you can again copy from the um, installation instructions, but it's explorer.exe space dot. And you can see our hello folder with, with all of the template files that DFX created. And we can now go back to VS Code um, and select open folder, select the IC project slash hello, and it should now open up our project in VS Code. Now, if you take a look inside the source folder, you'll see all the source files for this project. And we've got our main.mo, which is our Motoko file. But at the moment, it doesn't actually have any syntax highlighting, which is what our Motoko extension is supposed to do. So if you head over to the extensions tab, you can see this extension is currently disabled. And I want you to click on that button where it says install in WSL Ubuntu so that we can make it actually available in our WSL remote. Now, finally, we can head back to our main.motoku and you should see all the syntax highlighting. Now, there's also some HTML files and JS files, but we're now ready to deploy. So go into the terminal menu and then go to new terminal. And here I want you to write dfx start in order to start the local internet computer. And now once you see this listening on something, something, then I want you to split out a new terminal window by clicking on this button here and then type in dfx deploy in order to deploy this hello project onto that local um, dfx that we just started. Once it's done and you see your dollar sign again, you're going to type npm start to start up our server. And if you scroll up, you actually see it tells you where the project is running. So go ahead and copy that URL and paste it into your browser. And once it loads up, you'll see your starter project, type in your name, click on the button and you'll see the greeting show up. And that means you have successfully installed and set up everything that's required to start developing on the internet computer. So now you're ready to head over to the next lesson and we can get started writing some code.